What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. I actually want to go back to last week, and only because I feel like last week was probably one of the worst weeks Democrats have had. Um, and not just Democrats, you know, and I, and I catch myself doing this. It's not just Democrats. It's this cabal of people, the oligarchy, the rich, powerful elites, the system, the machine. This is and we say this all the time on the show. This election is about the people versus the machine. And last week was a bad week for the machine. I, I say Democrats only because Demo the Democratic Party has now become the party of the machine for the machine. The rich, powerful elites, where back in the day, Democrats used to be the party for the people, the, the, the middle working class, you know, the forgotten man. Well, that has all changed. And I want to go back because I feel like I want to go back to the, the, the funeral ceremony for the murdered NYPD officer because it was that particular event that exposed so much about the machine. And so I, I want to make sure we go back and we touch base on that before we move on to this week, because this week is going to be insane. In fact, for the next, well, let's see here. For the next 28 weeks is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen, because in 28 weeks is going to be the most important election of your lifetime. And we must, we must, ladies and gentlemen, do everything we can to get everybody we know out to go vote. And. If we don't, then I'm sorry, but this country is going to turn into something that none of us are going to recognize. And it already is on its way. But I feel like if we have to go through another four years of this, everything will be normalized. It will be forever changed into this new hierarchy. This fourth branch of government runs everything. And so I want to make sure that we feed the information to the people. OK, the, the, the name of the game is to inform, engage and fight against this tyranny that we are watching on the horizon. You could say two different Americas, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. A tale of two completely different Americas that we're all experiencing right now. We've all witnessed the past three and a half years. And the theme of today's show is going to be. The rich, powerful elites celebrate while America burns. And so that's what we're going to talk about. It's going to be a quick episode. I'm going to have to do this episode live. So you're going to have to excuse me for all the misspoken words and filler words and all that stuff. I just don't have time to edit, but I want to make sure I get you. I want to make sure that I get the information out there to my listeners. So without further ado, Let's get into all of this. If you want to support the show, please download the podcast on all major podcast platforms. If you want to follow the show, you could follow the show on Rumble. And if you want to get a hold of me directly, you can get a hold of me at Stephen Toriello Show at gmail.com. Follow the show on all social media platforms. And so without further ado, let's do this. You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. All right, so first rule of order i want to get into so what are we talking about here so i know you've probably been hearing about this funeral for this nypd officer and it was unlike anything i've ever seen it was a moment in time that really really hurt the democratic party and the machine because it really exposed the differences in the two americas we're all experiencing right now this funeral happened was a direct result from Democrat policies and Democrats' bad ideas when it comes to fighting crime and immigration. So because the Democratic Party, Governor Hochul, Alvin Bragg, D.A. Letitia James, all these Democrat strongholds have implemented these disastrous policies, and this is what's destroying the blue cities. And because of these policies, this officer died as a direct result from those policies. This is why it's such 
such a monumentous event that happened because, like I said, it exposed so much. Well, during this ceremony, a lot of Democratic officials wanted to show up, like always, and get their their photo ops. All right. Governor Hochul showed up. Um, supposedly, you know, the story is now that she wasn't asked to leave when before the story, the rumor was that the family asked her to leave. Now, I guess she's claiming that they didn't. Um, but needless to say that she did. She wasn't there very long and she got a lot of pushback from the family. Meanwhile, Donald Trump was actually invited by the family to the ceremony. And here is a piece of audio from somebody that was actually there that witnessed the entire thing. And I do have to say, this is probably the most, this is the closest we're going to get to actually being there. This guy does a great, a great job at explaining exactly what happened and what was going on while Donald Trump was there. Here, check this out. Inside the funeral home when the president, President Trump was there. Can you tell us what it was like inside? Well, I have to tell you that President Trump was a source of comfort to the family. Uh, he spent over 10 minutes with Stephanie, the widow, uh, in private. And then he went out into the main hall where the casket was laid and where police officer Dillard's body was laid. And he and Stephanie prayed together. Uh, they talked about what a great guy Jonathan was. And then President Trump went to each member of the family and offered his condolences. And the family asked him to sign a mask card. He sat down, <clears throat> signed the mask card, and then he got up. And then police officer Diller's grandmother asked the president for a hug. And he embraced her and held her very tightly. And as he left that area with over 200 of friends and families of police officer Diller, with their little boy, Ryan, with police officer Diller's mother, Fran, with his brother and sister and son-in-law. They did something I've never seen before, Janine, at a wake. They gave him a rousing ovation. They clapped their hands and showed their gratitude for President Trump's kindness and for his compassion. It was a very, very beautiful and warm moment. It's one that I will never forget. And I think it was very comforting for the family. That that is. Um... Yeah, that's actually quite incredible. And, you know, I can almost see it as if I was there. I can see Donald Trump doing this. I can see these. I can see this event actually happening. And I, without a doubt, I, I, I do not doubt for a second that that's exactly what happened, um, because that is exactly who Donald Trump is. And the police officers and border agents and first responders all across the country know that this country, this world was in a better shape when Donald Trump was president. What we've been experiencing the last three and a half years is pure chaos because we have a president and an administration that has adopted the philosophies and the policies of the radical left, the leftist progressives. These people are nuts. They're detached from reality. I mean, we're talking about complete opposite worlds. This is the two Americas that I'm talking about. And we have the left and this presidential administration trying to shove these changes down our throats. And the American people are resisting because they know this is not normal what we're dealing with. We live in a society now where the heroes are villains and the villains are heroes. Everything is backwards. It's like we're in... It's like we're in bizarre world. It's like opposite world. It's like every day is April Fool's Day. <laughs> it's it's really bizarre stuff. And where was Joe Biden when this was all happening? Well, Joe Biden was at a fundraiser. That's right. Joe Biden felt it to prioritize a political fundraiser with Obama, Bill Clinton, Stephen Colbert and Lizzo. Um, and among many other multiple celebrities, millionaires, billionaires, where they were charging $250 to $500,000 a ticket. I have this article here from NBC News. This just came out today. It says three presidents, celebrity performances and protester interruptions at Biden campaign's $26 million fundraiser. 
The Biden campaign said a sold-out crowd of more than 5,000 supporters at Radio City Music Hall helped raise a record amount for a single event. Ladies and gentlemen, this Radio City Music Hall is like 100 miles away from this family's home, from where the ceremony was taking place. Would it have been that big of a deal for Joe Biden to rearrange his schedule for 30 minutes or an hour to go over to this family and and comfort them and console them and, you know, support them? No. But the thing is, is if he did that, then Joe Biden would get pushback from the progressive left. You're talking about a crowd, a faction of people that want to defund the police. You know, they try and deny this now, but we all remember as if it was yesterday that these Democrats, these and, and public officials, mayors, governors, attorney generals, politicians coming out saying that we need to defund the police. They try and deny this, but it's true. These people with during the BLM riots back in 2020, the, the so-called summer of love, where cities burned, courthouses were taken over, police, sinks, police precincts were burned uh, uh, with police officers trapped inside, barricaded with bags of cement, water bottles were thrown, people died. You're talking about, I think, $40 billion in damage. Hundreds of people died. Those people would be up in arms against Joe Biden if he came out and went to that funeral. So you're talking about a president that is more worried about getting votes from the radical left than he is about a slain NYPD officer. And I think he and I think Donald Trump got the ovation from all these officers because the officers know that Donald Trump is sincere when he says he supports the first responders and police officers because he did. How do we know this? Because he was president for four years. You're talking about completely two, you're completely different leaders, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The contrast could not be any starker. You have a president that stands for the fundamental principles and values of this country, Christianity, God, respect, religion, all the stuff America was built on versus Joe Biden, who would sell his soul for a buck if it meant becoming president for another term. You're talking about a politician that's, uh, that's been in Washington for 50 friggin' years and hasn't contributed anything to this country. Not one thing can anybody think of that has bettered under Joe Biden. You know, the only thing I the only thing I remotely get from leftists when I talk to them about this is the CHIPS Act. It, it doesn't even make sense why a, a bill that funds multi-billion dollar corporations to subsidize them to do something they've already been doing. So it, like that to me is not an accomplishment for the American people. Will it create jobs? Sure, I guess. I mean, maybe. But are we sitting here telling me that's the only thing we can think of that bettered under Joe Biden? And so this guy, he knows that if he comes out and supports this family, and if he supports and, and shows his, his gratitude towards this officer, if he were to change his schedule to go to this funeral instead of this fundraiser, he would lose votes. That's how this man thinks. He doesn't care about anything or anybody but himself and his money and his power. And so this is what I'm talking about when I say the, different, the two different Americas we're all experiencing. And so while Joe Biden was a hundred miles away at this, you know, the, what reminds me of something out of the Hunger Games, he was in the Capitol, right? If you, this is how I think of this. You have the rich, powerful elite celebrating and genuflecting at Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and, and Joe Biden, right? While America is out here on fire, you got the highest crime rates, you have insanity in the streets, you have New York City is so bad that the governor has to use the National Guard down in the subway system. The progressive left does not want to stop crime, period. This is where George Soros comes in. He funds these radical DAs and, and, and prosecutors to not prosecute crime. This is the problem. And so while the rich, powerful elites were celebrating and patting themselves and congratulating themselves, America burns. 
So President Joe Biden was joined Thursday by two of his Democratic predecessors for a star-studded fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall that his campaign said brought more than $26 million. Former Presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton participated in the event in New York, with more than 5,000 supporters in attendance, including several protesters who interrupted the program when the three presidents were speaking. Yeah, this was the most craziest thing to me. Outside of this venue, there was hundreds, if not thousands of protesters calling out Joe Biden for it, calling him Genocide Joe. So you have the radical left that is, is protesting Joe Biden for the war against uh, uh, Hamas by Israel, the Israel-Hamas war, calling him Genocide Joe. And I don't even want to get into the Israel-Hamas thing. We're going to have to save that for another episode. But I will say this. There is overwhelming evidence that Joe Biden is funding both sides of this war, and he's funding one side, Iran, more than the other. How do you have a president that is funding our enemies that is trying to destroy Israel? This is mind blowing to me. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to play both sides. He's trying to hide what he does for Israel and downplay it while simultaneously amplifying what he's doing by giving money to Iran which Iran funds Hamas. He will not let Israel go destroy Hamas like Israel wants to and end this thing. This is the problem. This president does not want Israel winning this war, which is completely bizarre to me. Israel's telling the U.S. Israel's saying that they have these people cornered and that this would be over in two weeks if the, if the United States would just give them what they need and allow them to finish this job. The way I see it is exactly the way Donald Trump sees it. They need to finish this war as fast as possible and get it over so that they can start rebuilding. All right. There's not going to be this, oh, leave, uh, leave the leaders of Hamas alive so that they can regroup and then we'll have another October 7th. I'm sorry. I, I'm on the side of our ally Israel. I support them what they're doing. All right. You're talking about Gaza. Palestinians voted overwhelmingly, like 80 percent, almost 79 percent. For Hamas, a, a overwhelming majority of them supported what happened on October 7th. I'm sorry, but the evil people of Hamas need to, they need to be destroyed. And so he's leveraging, he's trying to leverage both sides for votes. That's everything this guy does is for votes. That's how you need to look at Joe Biden. He does not have a heart. He does not have a religion. He does not have principles. He doesn't stand for anything while simultaneously standing for everything. This is the problem with Joe Biden. And so, but this, this to go back to the theme of the show, Joe Biden was more concerned about getting money for his campaign, even though he's already outraising Donald Trump by 10, tenfold, because Democrats always outraise Republicans, and more particularly Donald Trump, because they have all the rich, powerful elite people. Donald Trump is being, he has maybe one or two you know, powerful, rich donors. The rest is all grassroots donations. That is it. That's who's funding his campaign. And I don't know about you, but that's who I want. All right. I want the guy that's, that's the champion for the little guy. All right. He was the first person that this country ever had that actually was fighting for them in the swamp. I've played and, I, and I've posted video after video showing how Donald Trump was fighting on behalf of the American people. When he was in the Oval Office, absolutely shredding Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer for the border wall, the border wall that would have cost five billion to 20 billion dollars to build and finish to stop this crisis at the southern border or at least alleviate a big mass portion of it. But because they did not give him his wall, now the American taxpayer is stuck paying a half a trillion dollars a year on this border crisis. So this is the problem. Donald Trump actually wants to fix things forever. You know, he wants he's not part of this swamp that that plays the American people like a game of chess. All right. Where they want open southern borders because it keeps the rich, powerful elite happy for cheap labor and it drives down wages so that they can essentially spend as much money as they want. This is the problem. Donald Trump is not part of their club. He's in our side. He's in our ring. You know, whatever people want to say about him. You know, whatever, all the lies, all the BS that they say. All I can tell you is I base things off what he's done. 
and what he's done for this country is more than what Chuck Schumer's done, more than what Nancy Pelosi's done, Joe Biden, and those three people combined have over 100 years in Congress. And nobody can point to me one thing either one of them, one of them have done to actually help America. Not one. Chuck Schumer's been in office since he was 25 years old. Nancy Pelosi, similar. Joe Biden, 29 years old. These people have been in politics off the government dole their entire lives and haven't contributed nothing. I'm sorry, Donald Trump is not the cause of all these problems. It's these people right here. And we must get our country back from them. But the Chuck Schumers and the Nancy Pelosi and the Joe Bidens and the, all the other rich, powerful elites could care less about a slain NYPD officer. This is how they think, man. I'm telling you, the people that support the machine, which are mainly Democrats, right? The leftist Democrats, they don't care about officers being killed. What they care about is whatever gives them more power. All right. They care more about it is always oppressed versus oppressor with them. All right. They think a police officer is the oppressor so they could care less. What they actually care about is the Palestinians because they feel like the Palestinians are oppressed. And it's always this is why they they're involved. This is where the BLM stuff comes in. It's always oppressed versus oppressor with these people. It's how it is, period. But they don't actually understand anything. Anyways, this funeral exposed a lot of the Democrats. It gave them a very, very bad week because in the poll numbers, the top issues for Americans are crime and immigration, which Democrats are doing the exact opposite of what people want. So people's top issue is immigration. What do Democrat? What are Democrats doing? What's this administration doing? Opening the southern border, giving us massive amounts of illegal immigration. Their second issue is crime in the streets. And what does this administration do? What do Democrat governors and DAs do? This person that killed this NYPD officer, he was arrested 21 times. What the hell was he doing back on the street to kill this police officer? This is the problem. And so unless Democrats do a complete reversal, which I'm actually shocked they haven't by now, but they're in some big trouble, man. And they should be. They absolutely should be. So I got I got an article here. I'm, I, I was going through some poll numbers. I wanted to know what was on top of mind for voters. And I found this Gallup poll. So it says inflation, immigration among top concerns to U.S. voters. So in, inflation's up there, too which I am starting to notice how people are acclimating to the inflation already, which I told you, if you remember the episode about a year ago, um, we were talking about how people would become acclimated to the inflation, which is just sad considering just four years ago, I mean, people's wages were up, inflation was down, people were buying homes, buying cars, the interest rates were low. People were actually getting ahead during the Trump administration. And it's not just one or two things he did. It's the it's the holistic approach that he took to the economy that made people's lives better. The number one thing he did was energy. OK, the, the energy production in this country was off the chains. And people want to argue that Joe Biden, that, you know, that the United States is drilling more now than ever. They can tell you that it'll show you that on paper. But it's the it is the little things that Joe Biden did that that just completely destroyed our energy infrastructure anyways getting into this gallup poll gallup poll gallup's early environmental poll conducted earlier this month found that 55 percent of americans worry a great deal about inflation making it to the making it the top issue among 14 issues presented in the survey illegal immigration was number seven on the list with 48 percent of americans saying they worry a great deal when asked unprompted what their top concern was, however, 28% of respondents said immigration and 11% said inflation. And then environmental issues, race relations, and unemployment were the least on Americans, with less than 40% of respondents saying that they were worried about each. 
Issues such as poverty, homelessness, and crime, despite being among the highest rated concerns when presented directly, were least mentioned as top of mind concerns. U.S. consumer inflation rose slightly in February, with personal consumption expenditures up by 0.3% from the previous month, 2.5% over last year. Food prices rose 0.1% in February, with energy prices up 2.3%. While still a top priority this year, concerns over inflation diminished by six points over the past year. Public concern for illegal immigration, meanwhile, grew by seven percentage points over the last year. Despite the fact that congressional Republicans recently sank a bipartisan immigration plan in an effort to help former President Donald Trump, public opinion on immigration court hurt President Joe Biden during the general election. As a survey from the New York Times and Siena College found, 70 percent of respondents believe the situation at the southern border is a major concern, including 66 percent of Democrats. That's it right there. Immigration. This immigration stuff is getting out of control. And this is why I say this is the stark contrast between the two Americas. These people, the rich, powerful elite, the machine, they don't have to worry about illegal immigration. In fact, they actually benefit from it because they get cheap labor. But it absolutely wrecks the regular working class American. It drives down wages. It takes out competition. It takes jobs away. It does so much damage to regular middle class America, among many, many other things. But this is a top issue on Americans' minds for a reason, because the American people are not dumb. They know that illegal immigration is bad for their wallet is bad for their families, is bad for their jobs. They know this. They're not dumb. These politicians, Joe Biden, this administration, they think the people are dumb, and they're not. And I'm so sick of hearing about this border bill. This was, and I want to go ahead and, and just end this argument right here, right now. I want to settle this right here behind this microphone when it comes to this supposed bipartisan border bill. All right, all right. So Democrats and people on the left, they think that Republicans purposely sank a bill because Donald Trump told them to. This is not true. Number one, this bill was not a bipartisan bill. This bill was negotiated by three Republicans behind closed doors with Mitch McConnell being one of them. I'm sorry, that's not bipartisan. All right. This bill was a disaster. All right. It did nothing to secure the southern border. It was just another trick that they were trying to pull past the American people. And it didn't work because the American people are paying attention now because of shows like this, because of podcasts, because of YouTube, because of social media. People aren't getting their news from CNN and MSNBC and Fox News anymore. You know, these, this is what freaks these people out. This is where the division is coming from. This is why things seem so chaotic. This is the great awakening. The American people are starting to get their information from other places now. Places like CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, they don't control the means of information anymore. So they can't bend it and twist it any way they want. Now the American people are starting to see exactly what's going on here. And this is where you have the two Americas. The, the machine does not want to let go of power. And the American people are trying to pry it from their fingers. And we're going to get it. So to get into this bill, I want to explain to any Democrats or, you know, independents out there that believe that Donald Trump told Republicans to sink this bill on purpose. It's just not true. All right. And we're going to go through the reasons why this was a bad bill for America. I got an article here from the Heritage Foundation. The U.S. Senate has finally released the border security text that three senators secretly negotiated for weeks with the Biden administration. Already, that doesn't sound good. All right. When you got three Republicans and one of them is Mitch McConnell negotiating with Joe Biden behind closed doors, do you think it's really going to be a good deal? If it was such a good deal, then why not debate it out in the open? Why not let the American people see what you're negotiating? OK, this is business as usual by the Republicans, by Mitch McConnell and the Democrats and Joe Biden. And the people are sick and tired of it. Enough. The people ain't having it anymore. So the Emergency National Security Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2024 includes more than $20.2 billion for border funding and hundreds of pages of border and immigration reforms. The key takeaway is that neither the funding nor the statutory reforms would truly secure the border, and border security is the only measure that Congress should use. I agree. 
This is what I don't get. Why did there have to be a bill in the first place? Donald Trump had the border secure. All you have to do is just implement the policies Donald Trump had put in place. Okay, Joe Biden, within the first few weeks in office, signed executive orders that completely dismantled those Trump policies because they wanted revenge on Donald Trump. It was for politics. For political reasons, Joe Biden purposely destroyed our southern border. So there doesn't have to be a new bill. There doesn't have to be new laws. Just implement the laws that we already have. Okay, we know they worked because Donald Trump showed us. This is why they hate Donald Trump. He was actually trying to fix things. They don't like things being fixed. Because when things are fixed, they're no longer needed. So the article goes on, Congress should stop funding sanctuary cities and NGO infrastructure. So NGOs is non-government organizations. These are organizations like the Catholic, um, I think it's called the Catholic the Catholic Foundation or something like that. These NGOs, they're, they're, they're subsidized by the taxpayers. There are these giant corporations, non-government organizations that are actually contracted through the government, subsidized by the taxpayer money. And these are how crooked politicians and crooked people get rich off the taxpayers. So when, when this country is in $34 trillion in debt, it's because of places like NGOs. It's just a sneaky way of skimming money from the American taxpayer and not fixing a damn thing. So with more than $7 billion for the Departments of Homeland Security, State Justice, and Health and Human Services, the Biden administration would again fund sanctuary jurisdictions and non-governmental organizations that have been facilitating mass illegal immigration using federal grants provided by these departments. Sanctuary mayors and governors have, de have decried the volume and cost of illegal aliens amassed in their jurisdictions. Yet they do not terminate their sanctuary policies. Instead, they demand more federal taxpayer money to pay for sheltering, transporting, and providing social services to the ever-increasing number of illegal aliens. This bill would deliver for these mayors and governors. That's it. So instead of just saying, okay, we made a mistake, these sanctuary cities were probably a very bad idea because we don't have the infrastructure. Instead of reversing course, no, they just want more money from the taxpayer. This is why they're trying to increase your taxes. So when they come out and say, oh, we need to tax the rich, what they mean to say is we need to tax you more because the rich don't pay more in taxes. It gets passed down to the consumer, us. And so I'm so sick and tired of hearing this tax the rich talking point by the same people that benefit from the same tax breaks that the rich, powerful elite do. So both the Biden administration and the sanctuary officials work with a network of secretive NGOs that built and staffed the considerable infrastructure that facilitates the mass illegal immigration from as far south as South America to and throughout the United States. Multiple videos have shown that NGO staff at shelters, hotels, and airports refuse to answer questions about illegal aliens they guard and grow physically abusive when filmed. Congress should be investigating and shutting down the sanctuary NGO machinery, not giving it more money to continue operating. That's what this bill would have funded. All right. So I'm, I'm reading this entire thing for people out there that that are under this impression. And they're, it's usually Democrats. They're under this impression that Republicans sank this bill because Donald Trump wanted them to. That is not the case. The moment the text and not before this text even was released to the public, the American people started getting leaks from the inside about what was in this bill. And Mitch McConnell and the two other Republicans that helped write it were like, oh, no, it's all lies. What you're hearing is fake news. It's lies. It's not actually what's in the bill. And then when the bill comes out, it's exactly what's in the bill. And they tried sneaking it past by issuing a 24 hour notice to vote on it. They got caught in another one of their schemes. And they tried blaming Donald Trump for it. This is, this is what they do with everything. Everything's Donald Trump's fault. A guy that was in office for four years is somehow being blamed for 50 years worth of problems. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, man. So what three senators negotiated with the architects of America's border crisis would convert the Biden administration's destructive policies and violations of immigration law into statute? essentially codifying what Joe Biden has done to the southern border crisis. All right. This is essentially when Joe Biden stripped all the policies that Donald Trump had in place that fixed the southern border. 
Joe Biden and this the Democrats and the machine created their own policies, which is cause of the crisis at the southern border. Well, this bill would have codified all that into law, making it almost impossible to get rid of. These measures would not only continue the border crisis, but would also make it more difficult for a future enforcement minded president to fix, which is Donald Trump. So here is the Senate bill accepts and codifies crisis levels of daily illegal immigration. If passed into law, this bill would create a three year border emergency authority to allow agents to expel illegal aliens back across the border during quote unquote extraordinary migration circumstances. Remember the key words here. This is what they do. This is how they play games with semantics in these bills. They make terms like this extraordinary migration circumstances. But the numerous exceptions and limitations swallow that authority whole. The Secretary of Homeland Security has the discretion to activate the authority after the U.S. Customs and Border Protection encounters an average of 4,000 illegal aliens daily for seven consecutive days. Secretary activation of the emergency authority becomes mandatory after the CBP encounters a 5,000 illegal alien daily average for seven consecutive days or 8,500 in one day. Not counted in those numbers are unaccompanied children, parolees, those who claim a fear of persecution, have already been in the U.S. for 14 days or have already traveled beyond 100 miles from the southwest border. The secretary would not be able to activate the authority for more than 270 days, 225 days, and 180 days in calendar years 1, 2, and 3, respectively. The bill then adds cumbersome and confusing calendar calculation requirements that further limit the secretary's use of the emergency authority. Finally, both the secretary and the president could suspend the authority. So this is what they do. They put all these nice looking words in here that sound good on the outside when you hear them like, oh, so they would be able to expel if if 4000 illegal aliens came across the day. Yeah, but what they do is they add these words called border emergency authority. And guess who they give that authority to? The Secretary of Department of Homeland Security, Mayorkas, and President Biden. And both of these people can suspend the authority, which means all they can say is, oh, yeah, we know there's 4,000 coming a day, but we don't care. <laughs> That's all this does. And so it's trickery, folks. This is what they were trying to do in this bill. It was trickery. It was nothing but semantics and games, just like business as usual. This is why Republicans didn't want this bill. This is why Donald Trump said, don't bring this bill, because they would have used it against Donald Trump, because Donald Trump actually wants to fix the border. These people do not. It is clear. You want to know how I know they don't want to fix the border and that all this is being done on purpose is because all they would have to do is just implement Donald Trump's policies that he used during his four years as president. Because in, during his four years in president, we had record low border numbers. This is how you know that these people don't want to fix this problem. So continuing to allow these crisis level numbers of illegal alien encounters means that border agents would remain overwhelmed and more illegal crossers would evade the agents turning into quote-unquote gotaways and bad actors. And bad actors would slip through limited and rushed vetting. All right, bullet point two continues catch and release and guts the mandatory detention statute. So it doesn't even get rid of catch and release, which is they come over the border, the CBP stops them, they get their name and some information, and then they let them go into the country. That's called catch and release. So it wouldn't even have gotten rid of that. So current law mandates detention for any alien who illegally enters the U.S. while pursuing asylum protection. The Senate bill redefines detention to non-custodial detention. Like I said, semantics. This is what they do. The Senate bill redefines detention to non-custodial detention. If passed in the law, families and children would be released without supervision. Worse, the bill codifies the Flores Settlement Agreement, as interpreted by a single U.S. district judge in California, who ruled that unaccompanied aliens could not be in immigration detention longer than 20 days. She later expanded her ruling to accompanied aliens, meaning families. This bill, this bill encourages more child recycling by cartels so that more aliens would pose as families to avoid even supervised release. DHS enforcement life cycle reports show that aliens released from detention are rarely removed and are far less likely to abide by a court-issued deport deportation order. Non-custodial release will result in a significant increase in the alien fugitive backlog. 
So essentially what would happen is, is that cartel members would be kidnapping more children so that they can claim they are families. All right. This is what's happening. This is how 85,000 children come missing at the southern border because of Joe Biden's border crisis. All right. This is all self-inflicted by the Biden administration, period. This is what we're dealing with. They caused this issue, folks, the first week in office. Bullet point number three expands and codifies Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas's mass parole abuse. The Senate should have adopted a parole narrowing text from the House passed bill. The Secure Border Act, H.R. 2, instead. The Senate bill expands parolee beyond extingent medical circumstances and a significant law enforcement or intelligence purpose for those arriving at or between land ports of entry. It includes other urgent humanitarian reasons, religious and culture celebrations and permits, an accompanying alien to join the principal alien. In addition, the bill does not limit parole for aliens arriving at air or seaports. All right. I know this is confusing. It's a lot of reading, folks. I get it, but I want to make sure that you, you're, you're getting this. It's almost done. All right, bullet point. What is this? Four or five? It doesn't matter. So next bullet point. Continues to encourage asylum fraud and accelerates work permits. In violation of the Homeland Security Act and Section 103 of the Immigration and Nationality Act, Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas finalized a rule in which he removed U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, attorneys, and immigration judges from credible fear asylum cases. He replaced them with... U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, asylum officers, reviewing their fellow asylum officers, resulting in rubber stamping grants of asylum. So essentially, he took he took the cases like he made it where the cases that are have to be heard by judges in, in asylum courts are now going to be heard by immigration services, which is essentially like, you know, it'd be like handing the parolee program to the BMV. All right. That that's essentially what it is. Instead of each case being heard by a judge in an asylum court, right, to determine whether they're actually an asylum seeker, if they're legit or if they're not. No, he wanted to hand this off to the Citizen Immigration Services, the USCIS, which is essentially like the BMV of immigration. And it would have rubber stamped all these immigrants and these asylum seekers into the country. <clears throat> If enacted, the Senate bill would codify Secretary Mayorkas' asylum processing rule. It would give aliens work authorization immediately upon release and create a bureaucratic third administrative appellate body with multiple chances for review, reconsideration, appeal, and motions to reopen their case. This would continue to encourage illegal aliens to submit fraudulent asylum claims to gain, ent to gain entry and remain and work in the U.S. So essentially... If they were denied asylum, they could appeal. They could they could they could drag it out for another 20 or 30 years. So essentially, they'll be able to stay here for the rest of their life. This is not how our system is supposed to work, folks. You cannot claim asylum if you're not actually in threat of your life or political persecution. Like it does not. Asylum is not somebody that can just come here because they're looking for work. It's not how any of this stuff is supposed to work, man. Like you're supposed to be an incredible threat for your life from for political reasons like, you know, this this whole notion that illegal immigrants are allowed to to gain entry into our country for work is ridiculous. It was never supposed to be like that. And besides, it's one thing to have rights to job. OK, it's one thing to have free migration to jobs. It's an entirely different thing to have free migration to welfare. This is the biggest problem we have with the immigration cr crisis right now. Nobody gives a flying rip which immigrants come into their country. What people care about is where their tax dollars are going. They don't want to give out tax money to people that should not be here, period. People want these immigrants, these asylum seekers to be paying into the system. You can't just give free welfare to anybody and everybody that wants to come into this country. So like I said, it's one thing to come here for work. It's an entirely different thing to come here for welfare. And what's happening right now is the American taxpayers is flipping the bill for almost a half a trillion dollars annually into things like welfare for the illegal asylum seekers and things like health care for the illegal asylum seekers. Our emergency rooms are being overloaded. The schools are being overwhelmed. All these things the American taxpayer has to pay for. OK, that is money going out 
with no money coming in. This is why our social security is going bankrupt. This is why retirement, like this is what is causing the problems. When you're spending $473 billion a year on a, an illegal, on a Southern border crisis, you got an issue. And this is what the American people are pissed off about. It has nothing to do with immigrants. Like nobody cares where you're from. All right. This is what I don't get. People care about where their money is going. That's what people care about. Granted, you may have some people that don't want immigrants here, but it's not the it's not the consensus of America. Trust me. Um, so last one here. <clears throat> it provides numerous and significant immigration reforms that are unrelated to border security. These include requiring U.S. taxpayers to fund deportation defense attorneys for unaccompanied aliens under 14 years and aliens found to be incompetent. Deportable aliens should continue to pay for their own deportation attorneys or seek the services pro bono. The left is breaking this bright line rule, starting with children, but it would certainly expand this benefit to other deportable alien populations in future legislation. Notably, U.S. citizens do not receive taxpayer-funded civil defense attorneys. I know I don't. When's the last time you got a free attorney? Never. So why the hell should illegal asylum seekers be given free attorneys paid for by the taxpayer. This is what I'm talking about. And just like this article said, it would start out with the children under 14, but then it would quickly escalate into the adults because that's what happens against, that's what Democrats do. That's what progressives want. You give them an inch, they take a mile. You let them ban handguns. You let them ban assault rifles. And the next thing you know, it's not going to stop until they ban all guns. This is, they always take things too far. Everybody knows this. And so th th there's no reason why taxpayers should be funding free defense attorneys for, for illegal aliens. I'm sorry. All right. It would also providing amnesty green cards to Afghans inspected and admitted to the U.S. by the date of the bill's enactment or paroled from July 30th, 2021 until enactment. The bill also accelerates neutral naturalization for the amnestied Afghans and gives Afghan allies refugee status for up to 10 years. Increasing the annual cap on the number of permit family-based and employment-based immigrant visas for five years, providing minor status and employment authorization for sons and daughters of H-1B visa holders, even though they have turned 21. Expanding the quote-unquote business or pleasure purpose of the B temporary visa to add a broad definition of family purposes. The bill also permits family members to use the broader B visa to remain in the U.S. while they await their family-based green card. This undermines the temporary purpose of the B visa. President Biden could secure the border with current authority. He does not want to. President Joe Biden opened the border and created the country's crisis using only executive, not congressional authority. He can end the chaos with the same executive authority. He does not need congressional authority. This is why he keeps saying, oh, just let me pass the laws. Tell Republicans to pass the laws and I could fix this. Dude, you're the one who freaking broke it. This is like the arsonist coming out of the fire and saying, hey, just give me a hose. I'll put it out. Like what? This is insane, man. So the only test for funding and legislation, would it truly secure the border? When illegal aliens come to the U.S., they want to enter, remain and work here. And that is the best case scenario. The border is just as open to terrorists, the Chinese, Russians, and any number of people who do not want to merely work here. Securing the border requires preventing those three things. The bill negotiated by three senators and, pre and President Biden funds and facilitates more mass illegal immigration. It is a disaster for border security. And that's it. That was a whole article by the Heritage Foundation. So I hope for you, those of you out there that believe that this bill was, was sunk, because Joe, because Donald Trump wanted it to be, this bill sunk. It was denied by Republicans because it was a disaster for border security. And we didn't even get into all the pork that was in this thing. All the earmarks that would have been stuffed in this bill would have been outrageous. I mean, you're talking, who knows, man, but this would have been a disaster. Here's the thing. This is what I don't get. It's like people on the left, Democrats, they seem to think like this, the border wasn't secure under Donald Trump. They seem to think that Joe Biden didn't do anything to cause this crisis. Joe Biden caused this border crisis. 
with the 60 to 90 executive actions that he took undermining the Trump policies to reverse them for political reasons. That's it. It was like the most it was the happiest moment for the Biden administration and Democrats is when they were reversing all of Donald Trump's policies. Well, guess what? What happens when those policies that Trump enacted were actually good and they were actually effective in helping fight back illegal immigration at the southern border? Well, what do you get? You get a complete freaking crisis at the southern border. And so Joe Biden doesn't need legislation. This was just a stunt by Mitch McConnell to try and give Joe Biden a leg up to handicap Donald Trump and for political reasons. This is all about power, folks. That's all these people think about. You're talking about Mitch McConnell that has been in office. He's been a Senate leader for like 30 years. He's been in office for like 50. All these people care about is power and staying in power. If you actually had people in Congress to actually fix the problems in this country, they wouldn't be needed anymore. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be divided, fighting one another over stupid stuff. Okay, these people need division. This is why when you're watching C-SPAN and you see Republicans and Democrats that go on CNN or, or Fox News and they talk crap about one another and you see them on the floor giving each other fist bumps. Dude, these people, it is one gigantic game. Politicians are nothing but very, very good liars. That is it. And what we have going on is that the people that should be in Congress aren't because they don't want to be politicians. And the people that shouldn't be in Congress are because it takes a certain type of person, a arrogant, disrespectful, lying fraud to be a politician. Not all politicians, but just most. Think about it, man. Everything these people do, they live for this stuff. I mean, they practice being good liars. Look at Joe Biden. Nobody can lie as good as Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a expert politician. He knows how to pull on the heartstrings of people. This is when he talks about his kid. You know, every time somebody dies, he brings up his kid as if his, as if his kid died in, in Afghanistan in battle or something. This is why he lies about everything. He doesn't even care that people can look up his videos and know that he's lying. I mean, he lies about lying. He'll say a lie. And when people call him out on it, he'll say, I didn't say that. <laughs> like, it is so mind-blowing. But the thing is, is that the American people are on to their shtick, man. And the American people are sick and tired of the country that these people have given them. And they're taking it back. And the poll numbers show it. People are sick and tired of the crime in their streets. They're sick and tired of this government spending money, spending this country into oblivion. Wasting half a billion, half a trillion dollars of taxpayer money on a crisis that they created. Wasting taxpayer money on stupid stuff. The people have had enough, man. And this officer's funeral, the death of this NYPD officer, just exposed all of this. All of it. Because when you have one guy going to a funeral, of an officer that is dead because of the policies that Democrats have put forth. And you have the Democrat leader, the president of the United States, at a fundraising event where they're charging $250 a ticket, raising $26 million, instead of being at that funeral for that officer's family. You know you have two completely different Americas. And everybody's experiencing it. And just like I said in my last episode, when history writes about these days, you have to ask yourself, are you on the right side? And ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm telling you, I promise you, you're on the right side. I would not be here behind this microphone. This podcast would not be here. I would, if, if things were fine and my country was on the right track and I felt like things were good and I was leaving a better country for my kids and my grandkids when I have them. I wouldn't even be here. This would be unnecessary. I'm here behind this microphone to inform my fellow Americans that things are going down the wrong path. This country is going down the wrong path. We are on our way to some type of tyrannical, totalitarian, third world country if we do not reverse course on this immediately. 
And these two Americas that we're all experiencing are up for vote in 28 weeks. And that'll be when you decide which America do you want. Do you want a, do you want a country that stands for merit, that stands for fighting crime, peace, that stands for prosperity? Or do you want a America that is complete opposite, that lets criminals back on the street, doesn't believe in a merit-based system, but a racial-based system? Opening the southern border, flooding this country with tens of millions of new people to drive down your wages because these people work for less money. And while simultaneously charging you more on your taxes, taking more of your money, Joe Biden, that's worth tens of millions of dollars, Barack Obama, that says this country is, you know, is, is suffering from its racism. This country is systematically racist. All right. Worth tens, I think over a hundred million dollars now. The Obamas got rich off of being president. All right. Got rich off of this country and wants to, and always ragging on this country, trying to fundamentally change it, saying that there's something wrong with this country. I'm sorry, you don't want to change something that you love. You got Stephen Colbert, paid millions of dollars, hates this country. Bill Clinton, how the hell are are, are Democrats still allowing Bill Clinton out on stage in public? I mean, this guy, the things that he did to women are unbelievable. If Donald Trump would have done a, a fraction of what Bill Clinton did to women, well, look what they're doing to Donald Trump. He just had to pay $93 million. Where's Monica Lewinsky taking Bill Clinton to court? Where's Tara Reid taking Joe Biden to court? This is what I'm saying. It is the tale of two Americas. And in 28 weeks, we're going to have to decide which America we want to be a part of. We're going to have to decide which America we want to leave our kids. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, if you want to support the show, please download the podcast, all podcast platforms. If you want to follow the show, follow the show on Rumble. And I hope everybody had an amazing Easter weekend. I certainly did. It was it was my duty to kind of stay on track and, and go back and touch base on this border bill because I know I was getting I, I've been getting a lot of messages Uh, I've been hearing this talking point a lot that every time people blame Joe Biden for the border crisis, now Democrats just blame Republicans. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. No, no, no. Joe Biden is the cause of the border crisis. The border, the supposed bipartisan border bill was neither bipartisan nor secured the border. So it was a waste of time. It was it would have made the it would have made the border worse. It would have made everything worse, and it would have made the taxpayer pay more money. So, no, it wasn't Donald Trump. It was we, the people, that denied this bill. So, and I, and I want to make sure that on this show that sometimes we go back and we touch base on these things because I feel like, you know, when these talking points get out there, when the media spreads these, the, the, when the media spreads this propaganda, people believe it. And trust me, I have so many more talking points that I want to completely debunk from the left. I've been writing them down and, you know, because I really I have a good grip on the left, folks. Like I I have friends. I know people that vote for Biden. I I talk with these people and they tell me the same stuff that CNN and MSNBC are filling their heads with. And so I, I think it's important that we as conservatives especially content creators, you know, people that are informed enough to to talk about this stuff, that we go back and we touch on these topics. And this was one of those topics. And I hope I explained it good enough. If I didn't, let me know. I'll, I'll dive in deeper into the bill. I'll, I'll get more content. I'll do whatever I got to do to make sure that the information gets out there, that the truth gets out there. I, I don't want people thinking this bill wasn't passed because Donald Trump said so. That is not the case at all. The Republicans, me in particular, we knew what this bill said before it even came out. Donald Trump didn't reject this bill until like four days after we started getting leaks from the text of this thing. And so, you know, I think it's important that we make sure we 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 kind of put a stop block on these talking points coming from the Pravda media. And so that's what we hopefully did on today's show. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I hope you all had a good Easter. I hope you guys have a great Monday. 
We get a start at a brand new week. It's going to be a wild one, folks. So strap in, buckle up. Things are going to get wild these next 27 weeks. Uh, the closer we get to the election, the more desperate these people are going to get and the more chaos is going to ensue and just the more the more lies are going to come out. The more the, the more desperate these people get, the worse things are going to get. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much stuff to get into. And that's and then on the next segment, I think I want to get into the tax talking point where Democrats seem to think that Donald Trump's tax cuts only benefited the rich, powerful elite and the corporations. This is not true. I have statistics. I have charts. I've been working on this for a while. So that's what we're going to talk about on the next episode. Donald Trump's tax cuts benefited the working middle class the most. And this is why you felt it. And this is why it's so bad now. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next episode. So make sure you tune into that one. Like I said, I want you guys to have a good Monday. I hope you had a good Easter. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. So thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And God bless America. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.